Yes, so good day and um, welcome to Talk Your Talk once more. It's always a pleasure being here, for real. I like being here. Now, today, all honor and glory to the Most High Yahuwah through His Son, Yahushua HaMashiach. Now, today what I'm going to talk about is basically the renewing of the mind. You know, the Holy Scripture tells you that you have to renew your mind, okay? But then the Holy Scripture also said that you have to be born again if you want to enter the kingdom of our Elohim. But first of all, let me read this for you, okay? Now, that is in, um, in John chapter 3, right? Now, first of all, let us get it straight. There was a guy named Nicodemus, right? A ruler of the Jews. The same came to Yahushua by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from Elohim, from Yahuwah. For no man can do these things, uh, do these miracles that thou doest, except Yah be with him. Okay? Yahusha answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man, a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahuwah. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born which he, when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yahushua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of Yahuwah. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound, therefore, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Okay. I love that. Now we'll wind up this. So here, Nicodemus wanted to know how a man could be born again. But Yahushua told him that he must be born of the water and of the spirit. Now, <laughs> it's beautiful because most people think that uh, they have it to believe or uh, they look at it this way. That to burn of the water meaning you have to you have to be baptized. Yes, you have to be baptized. But somebody taking you and docking you under a water doesn't make you born again. So let me explain that. So ask me a question. What do we do with water? We drink water to live. It is essential. We also clean with water. Okay? Now, you remember that when um, John the Baptist was baptizing people, he said that he is baptizing the people, not just baptizing them, but baptizing them to repentance. To repentance, sorry. Okay? He is baptizing them to repentance. So when you duck under the water, it's like you are committing yourself. You know, it's like a, a symbol of cleansing from your sins. Okay, so it's basically, it's like 
if you are committing yourself, you understand, to walk in the road of righteousness. Okay? It's just the symbol, but that doesn't mean that because you're baptized, you are totally washed of your sins. No. The cleansing of your sins come about with repentance. Okay? And repentance is like a symbol of water. It's like you're trying to wash yourself. Okay? Now, let me... So what is happening there is that if you have to be born again and you have to be born of the water and of the spirit, straight up it is obvious you have to repent. You have to clean yourself. You have to clean yourself and that way and that's the only way the spirit will come and dwell within you. When you ask for repentance, when you are washed, when you, you get rid of the old leaven, yeah. When you throw out the old wine from the old cast to put new wine, when you do those things, and you are clean, then you are ready for the Spirit to dwell within you. As a result of that, once you make that commitment, you are on the road to righteousness. And then the Spirit will be able to dwell within you. The Spirit would not be able to deal within you or dwell within you if your house is dirty inside your mind. Now, so let us take a look at this here. And we will take a look at Romans, right? In Romans 12 and 2. I think everybody know that scripture. He said, and be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove that ye may know what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. So once you decide to make that change, your normal way of thinking would have to be changed because that is the cleansing. If you change the way you think, you have to change the way you think completely. You cannot think in ways of the flesh anymore. Okay? So we will tell you eventually what is the ways of the flesh. But you have to change your mind, your way of thinking, your outlook on the life have to change. And unless you do that, you are not being born again. Okay? You will not be born again if you don't change your mind. You have to change your way of thought. Because remember, he said that even in your thought, you can sin. Just thinking about something evil makes you guilty of doing it. Okay? We have to be aware of that. Okay? So you have to, you must change your mind. You must change the way you think. You see? And that is important. You see, most of the time, why you find a lot of people falling away from a lot of religious sect they go in, whatever they do, okay, is that they get themselves in there and they listen to what maybe their preachers or whatever, whosoever teaches them or whatever it is. But somehow, they never had a platform whereby they will be educated to change the way they thought. You see, the way they think. The thing about it is that if you change the way you think, automatically you will change the way you live. You will change how you look at things. And then once 
you change the way you think. As I said earlier, then the spirit will be able to dwell within you. Okay? Until such time, that won't happen. You must do that. Now, let us take a look at um, Galatians, right? Now, Galatians 22, 5.22. I think most of you must be know Galatians 5.22. Okay? And it, it actually deals with the fruit of the Spirit. So when you go to repentance and you want to make a thorough change around in your life, most people I hear think about, oh, I'll change my life. Yes, they change your life from the, pot, from the fire into the frying pan. And that's the way they do it. But if you want to make a thorough change of your life and you don't want to be a slave to what is happening in this earth anymore, you understand? You have to change that way of thinking. You must do that. If you don't do that, you will constantly be a slave. Okay? So when the Spirit is being led into you, when the Spirit comes into you, you will be a new person. Okay? Now, when the Spirit comes in now, you will be led by the Spirit. Like the scripture said in Galatians 5, 6, and it said, This I say unto you, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the, the lust of the flesh. Okay? Now, lust of the flesh doesn't actually mean or always mean straight up having sex with people and lusting. No. It's everything you do, what you lust of, what you crave, what you, what you want, what possesses you. That is of the flesh, what gives you pleasures, you know, useless pleasures. That is lust of the flesh, okay? So let us go and see what it is, the lust of the flesh, and then we'll go right into what is the, the fruits of the spirit. So for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to the one to our other so that he cannot do the things that you would. In other words, if you decide to follow the flesh, you will be lusting after material things, dead things and stuff like that. Temporary things you will be on. And that is the fact. Okay. Vain things. After the spirit, if you're lost and you go after the spirit to live after the spirit, the, the spirit will be leading you in path that will lead you to eternal life. And that's the absolute truth. Okay? Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? You know, if you realize that, skip one. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Okay? Well, most definitely, we will get down to that eventually. Okay? Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strifes, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before. As I have also told you in time past, that they which do such such things shall not inherit the kingdom of our Elohim. So most of the things we talk about of the spirit of the flesh is those things basically lost. You live your life working and fighting to to attain a set of wealth. To attain things that is temporary. As a matter of fact, you are a living person fighting to attain dead things. That is disrespectful to the Most High or Elohim. Okay? Now, when you do that, you are, you are actually paving your road to death. Because death is what is on your mind. Trust me. Death is what is on your mind. Without you even realizing it. You see, the reason why I say death is on your mind is because all the things you're fighting for, all the things you pursue, they doesn't have life in them. So your mind is constantly upon death. Your mind is constantly upon death, die, um, dead things. Money, dead, no life. House, dead, no life. Cars, dead, no life. Clothes, dead, no life. 
That is it. So your mind is constantly on death. You wake up in the morning and you go to work fighting to attain dead things. Things that have no life. That is exactly what you are doing. And you will get paid based on what you work for. The thing about it, it is never too late for anybody to make that turn around, to look at a thing the way it's supposed to be seen. You know, you could be 100 years old. You understand? You could be 100 years old. The thing about it is that you have to recognize that. You know, it's sad. Everybody on one road to death. Okay? Now, if we have to take a look, once you get that mind changed, that is why it is important to, to change the way you think. You have to restructure your priorities then. You have to know what is most important in this life. Not what is the most important to your flesh right about now. Or what is most important to, to you on a daily basis, like in terms of material things. You have to know what is most important to you in life and not dead things. It is important. I know that might sound a, a little bit strange to a lot of people based on the life you live. That is why the scriptures say you have to renew your mind. In, in other words, you have to reprogram your mind. You have the willpower to do that. You have to renew your mind. You have to think differently. You have to, most of the things, as a matter of fact, that we learn, you have to unlearn these things. You have to take all this old wine that was given to you, this poison. You have to flush yourself from that. You understand? And put new wine in your cask. You have to do that. You know, you have to repent. You have to, you have to vomit all this thing they give you. And let the most I put the spirit within you. Be humble. Be at peace. You understand? The struggles, the struggles is real. And no two ways about it. You understand? And once you could do that, then the spirit will be able to dwell within you. And then when the Spirit starts dwelling within you, then you will get the fruits of the Spirit. Okay? And as Galatians 5.22 tells you, the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. You understand? Now, in one sentence you have, Love, joy, peace, long suffering. You understand? Long suffering. So that means you'll experience some suffering. But then there is joy and there is peace. Why? Because when you discover the fruits of the Spirit within you and the Spirit dwells within you, so you experience the fruit of the Spirit and you start meditating on things that is wonderful, things that is great, then what would happen is. When you have in your long suffering, you, you, you meditate on, on, on life, you know, you start seeing life as a, in a different light then. You start seeing life and you're not looking at death. Once you start doing that, pain and worries and those kind of things, that will be just another day. That, it will be a joy. You see, your joy and your happiness will be so much knowing you understand the kind of faith you have and where you are going, the journey you are on. That is nothing. And life will be more meaningful to you. And that's a fact. Life will be much more meaningful to you once you start thinking and looking at life differently. You understand the way the Most High or Elohim wants us to look at life. Okay? If we constantly looking at life the way they are programmed for us, according to man-made doctrines and man-made philosophies, we will always be in bondage 
to whatever is happening. You could have how much money makes no difference. You are in bondage. Total slavery mentally. You have to be able to free your mind from that. And the only way to free your mind from that is to change the way you think. Okay? And the way you have to change your mind to think is to go and seek out that repentance. Seek out this water to wash. Wash you clean. You understand? And allow the Ruach or the spirit of our Elohim to enter you. And then your life will be an example to everyone else in the sense that you will be led by the spirit so wherever the spirit will lead you there would you go where the remember what the scripture tells you let me let me get it for you again and the wind blew it where it listed and thou hearest the song thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. That is John 3. So what is actually telling you? Your life is being led by the Spirit. Man, not even you, could fully determine where you are actually going at the moment. Once the Spirit... You, you, the spirit is dwelling within you because the spirit will take charge. So what will happen is that you'll get up in this morning, the spirit will tell you, okay, here we go now. Tomorrow, today, your mission, you have to go and take water in the river. Then the spirit leads you. You didn't even know that yesterday. You see, the thing about it is that most of us walk with the flesh. We walk with the flesh. We go to work and we say, okay, this weekend, you know, I'll buy this thing and I'll buy that. And in 10 years, I'll do this and I'll do that. That is not the work of the Spirit. No. That is not the work. You could channel a course for yourself in the flesh. A course that you don't even know where you are. I mean, if it will if you will get you or not. Because you don't know tomorrow. You don't know what will happen next year or ten years from now. So when you plan in ten years from now, that's a delusion in itself. You are deluding yourself. You understand? Hence the reason the scripture say to live one day at a time. He say you have enough worries to deal with today. You understand? You have enough. So why worry about tomorrow when you don't know what tomorrow is? friend the scripture said whatever things are good whatever things are wonderful you understand whatever things that are honorable Whatever things that give a good report, whatever things that lead to life, those are the things you have to meditate on. Right in your mind. You see, most of us have this way of thinking uselessly, idly, about stuff that we not supposed to think of or we should not be thinking about this thing but i could tell you that once your mind is being renewed and you start looking at life in the way our elohim wants us to look you could never you understand condone those evil thoughts once you wash yourself and the, 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 the spirit start dwelling within you, I could guarantee you, you would not be thinking about, I have to do all these things, these things that will take up so much of my time. Remember, the scripture said that you can't serve two masters. And it is so true. So, in other words, you can't serve 
our Elohim and at the same time son so Baal that is not how the thing will go okay now it's just like somebody said recently that um They can't understand, you know, how some people in the Christian denominations, you know, how they fight in money. I just say, well, and they say that they are followers of Christ, whatever. I just look at it as a joke because the truth of the matter, I have never read about any of the disciples that follow the Ahushua, that is who you call Christ. I never read about any one of them who was self-serving or getting rich and you know driving around in big carriages and stuff i've never really actually read about that even when because he was following yahushua all the way and i've never read where yahushua attained a whole lot of wealth and stuff like that okay i've never read that but then even if you tell a christian that they will find something to justify what they do. The point is, that is where you have to change your mind. You have to, you see, that is the, that is the, 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 the level you have within you, what they educate you with. Those are the things you have to get out from your system and serve the most high in the way he's supposed to be served. That is the only way you can be born again. You have to be born again from all those doctrines and those devil and satanic worship no you have to do that okay you must because most of the religions out here are actually teaching you how to get wealthy and then realize there is a trend in the religion they're always talking about people who might envy you so you have to leave them out and, and go through with your purpose and go through with this that is satanic most of them trying to be um are what you might call motivators no they are not they are motivating you to be the worst kind of person you understand most of the churches out there they don't teach you humility no they don't they don't teach you, teach you how to be totally submissive and dependent on our Elohim. no they don't teach us that no, no more what they teach us is that you you understand? Go out there and walk and push and do what you gotta do. That is satanic in itself. Okay? So those are the kind of things you have to change your mind. You might find it something simple. It is simple. And because it is so simple, a lot of you out there who may be high-minded and so high-strong and so proud, you would not see the wisdom in it. You know? But I will tell you again that if you don't or you don't learn to change your mind and change the way you look at things, you understand? But everything you do is in relation to contribute to that wicked system that we're living in. You could never tell me you are born again. You are not. You have to change your mind. And when you change the way you think, and when you decide to change your way, there will be two ways. One of death and one is life. Right now, you live in the way of death because that is on your thought every day. Car, house, money, this, that, the other death that is what is on your mind okay but then be a seed and born again that's the beauty about it because that is the reason our, of our elohim sent his son yahushua to die for to lift you from death unto life as simple as that so you have to with the scriptures that i gave you read and even extend on it 
okay extend on it you know study it work on it and work your salvation out that's what you gotta do work out your salvation with fear and trembling don't be led astray by those people no mm -mm. because at the end of the day you are the one who will be standing up in front of Yahushua to answer for your sins. Don't ever think you on a church or you on a pastor or you on whosoever. No. It will be you alone answering for that. You understand? That is why the scripture says you have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Trembling, not all you. You. But then you could be as plural just as well. So that means if a group of you get together and decide to change your mind, then you steal you. So you could be plural and you could be singular. Okay? But you have to know. You have to know truth. It's important. So, anyway, as I said, Change your mind. Change the way you think. Change the way you look at things. What we are looking at on the face of the earth, the way things are going, we have to wake up and there is this political this and there is this this and there is this that. These things are designed to distract you. All these things, you have, you have to study well, mountain, I have to pay bill. You have to do this, you have to do that. These things are designed to distract you and lead you down a hole where you should not be going because trust me the evil forces know that it doesn't matter what you do you could go you could walk 110 100 years but how long you living in that house to enjoy what your life of 70 80 90 100 years how much life is that but then you would work out all this time. They will have you focusing on this one thing. This dead thing. All your life. It's sad. Take a rain check. Sit down a little bit. Sit down. According to our friend, sit down. But relax a little bit and look at life differently. You mightn't have much material things. But the crave you have for them, you have to get that out of your system. So you mightn't have much material things running around, but you will have an abundance of life. I could guarantee you that. If you crave those things, if you, 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 you crave those things that people have, they have big holes, they have a lot of cars, they have this and your crave those things. This thing is what keeps you in bondage. Those are dead things you are craving. That's the absolute truth. Those things are dead things that you crave. The system designed that way to have people in this way. Oh, the system we're living in is a satanic system. Okay? It's a satanic system. Believe that. And the system is designed to keep you away from life. And when you start changing your mind and looking at it differently, the system will come at you. But then, it's mind over matter. Because they are matter because you know are living in the spirit. And that is where you will have joy. And that is where you will be long suffering. Because they will come at you. But then you will have your faith. Because that will be the fruit of the spirit. Okay? It doesn't matter what happens. The point is when the time of judgment comes. Then we would know who is who.
we have to be pro-life pro-life and i am not talking at this moment about being pro-life in relation to abortion and stuff like that no i'm not talking about that i'm talking about we have to think living we have to focus on what is alive not what is dead we have to focus on life i said that over and over in the past there okay that's what we have to do so as i said have a wonderful time be at peace it's always a pleasure being here so as the as the topic says change how you think and be born again it is important be born again be at peace be blessed i would most definitely see you in another video Give thanks and praises to the Most High Yahuwah, to His Son Yahushua Hamashiach. Peace.